Welcome to Buck's Bug Out Survivor. And tonight I'm going to take out all things Snug Pack. That includes a Snug Pack hammock, a Snug Pack under blanket and the top quilt and the cocoon. The only thing I haven't bought out is the Snug Pack kit monster. Now I've had this all set up like this since January and today is mid June and it's the first time I've been out for the night with this particular kit and you notice I'm carrying it all on a vintage frame a hell of a lot easier to carry uh, I've set it all up uh, very uniquely as well I've never seen anyone uh, do the snug pack like this but I'll show you now So, all the snug pack kit does come in its own individual stuff sacks. There's a stuff sack for the cocoon, one for the top blanket, one for the under quilt, one for the hammock. Um, and I've had to get Atlas straps, like Python straps for the trees. But it's all been unified. So everything is loose filled in here, including straps. It's strap out first onto the tree. I pull the whole lot out, strap to another tree, and that should be us done. This pack here and the kit in it is one of the quickest um, to deploy and to strike down at the end of camp. If I so wanted, I could uh, deploy all this in under five minutes, including the tarp. I'm gonna get this up. I'm going to see about the basher, might not even need it tonight. It's predicted quite warm weather. But I bought the cocoon, although it's going to be warm tonight, just because I've been so let down by manufacturers claiming their kit will take you down to a certain uh, temperature. And it just doesn't. That's it, that's everything up. That's the cocoon, that's the under blanket, that's the hammock itself. It just needs some fine tuning. I'd say that's not far off. A nice little setup. Gonna try it out for size. So quick deployment for the carabiner there, straight onto Python straps or Atlas straps, whatever you want to call them, which in turn is holding up all the hammock set up. This is the cheap beaner. I got from China, uh, not for climbing it says, I hope it's okay for hammocking. A little bit of shoulder pinch going on here and that's either because the span here is too long or this section here is too tight. So two ways there to fix that problem. And this time I've counted an equal amount of spacings between foot and head end, 11 of them uh, attachment spacings and it's perfect, there's no shoulder pinch or anything. This is the under blanket, it's exactly what it sounds like, it's a blanket that wraps around the snug pack, I'm not sure which snug pack hammock this is, it's the one without the netting. Now you can't have the netting because of this outer skin that goes around the under blanket called the cocoon and it zipped from foot to head whenever I feel the need but I'm going to leave it open tonight 
because I want to see if just this under blanket snugged up against my butt here is going to keep me warm. Now snug pack do this over blanket as well it's just like a little duvet and in the bottom it has a place to put your feet. Now to me that under blanket just looks like and feels like the army jungle sleeping bag but it does feel a little nicer and warmer somehow it's certainly as thin now this micro diamond weave you're looking at now see the little diamonds in now it's all got that on but this stuff will reflect in torch light now that's when a basher or tarp would aid um, that solution there so whether I use the tarp tonight or not is um, just down to whether it, I, I feel rain. If I feel rain, I'm put it up and get under it. So I'm going to keep that as a setup. If it's successful tonight and I don't use the cocoon, I'm going to take the cocoon off so it's not carried in the pack. That will save half the volume in that pack. Um, and it'll take nearly two kilos out of the pack. I'll show you what else is taken out two kilos out the pack. Don't move. Water. I very rarely these days try and carry water on the pack, even in a camelback or anything like that last time. I had pouches, water bottle pouches, which was attached to a waistband on my Bergen. Uh, or I can't remember what it was. It might have been a recon pack. And that carried okay. I didn't have the weight in the pack. This is called the Long Range Recon Patrol water pouch. The LRRP. Has a shoulder sling there. Uh, this is off a different pack. But... It's really, really easy to carry. I can have a drink on the move. But most of the journey here, I just carried it in my hand like that. It wasn't a problem. So first I'm gonna show you me getting in with just the under blanket here and the top blanket or under quilt and top blanket. And then if you've never seen a hammock cocoon before, it's a big sleeping bag that goes over the whole lot and zipped up down the middle. And I'll show you that as well. And here's the little foot box there. Put my feet in like that. The under blanket comes up and over my shoulders, keeping my back warm here. But here's the cocoon. And it comes over the whole lot. Now I've had this down to about four degrees before I woke up with a bit of a chill. So it's not bad. I can zip it top and bottom. Now before I have a brew on the booster stove, I'm going to show you some modifications. Let's first come to the foot end of the under blanket. It has a tab on either side which I put a beaner through and it snugs up around my feet without it it would splay open and it really makes a world of difference just having these beaners foot and head end okay other changes are made now to support the under blanket is just um, a couple of bits of shock cord which you tie into I think they advise a slip knot. You put the slip knot into your beaner. So I've invested in one of these little cords, a little cord lock. It's a double. So I can slacken off like that. And it slackens the under blanket and lets it hang lower. Alternatively, when I press that button, I can tighten it. So I can adjust how high up this under blanket sits next to my butt. Now last time I was out in just the cocoon, 
that if you zip it all the way it's dark so you never find the zips and then you're in trouble if you need an emergency wee I've put these, now they're not LEDs these are fluorescent and I'm going to hide it down there in the dark and bring the camera in now can you see that glow there so I'll find my little zips in the middle of the night and there's another one I can find the little pocket now there's a pocket also on the snug pack cocoon this one's a zipped pocket and there's another one of them fluorescents now if I shine a torch on this it actually energizes it and it'll actually fluoresce a hell of a lot brighter Hacker 5 fiver and I've got let's see four on this and I've never camped here before it's a first overnight camp in this location for me and uh, I've just got here and the tree machine cutters I've got here before me but they've ploughed acres acres of my campground um, and they didn't ask otherwise I'd have told them to save me a bit I have the Wildo folder cup this is the 600 mil what I'm trying to do is get everything compact and lightweight now I can even go more lightweight than all this with a, a homemade stove this is the aluminium or anodized BCB cup now the actual stove is rather nice I think you see it'll fit in my cup quite nicely but it's no good on its own it needs a fuel bottle and a pump and whatever else that goes with it but other than that it's okay it's a noisy little bugger a bit like the surveyor was because it has that kind of spreader bar which makes it noisy there is a silent damper for this it was 30 odd quid and I think it's a little winner for that much If it works out for us here tonight, it might be a lovely little spot for future camps for me. You never know. We'll see how it goes. Now the booster plus one here doesn't always like to simmer, but I can get it to simmer if I wanted. Oh, I'm dripping coffee everywhere. There, steam. All you do, I'll show you actually. But I'll tell you first, you need to turn off the burner completely at the valve. You give it another 12 pumps to build the pressure up. And then relight it and it should simmer. But as you can see, it's simmering quite nice as it is. Maybe I've simmered it so much with that little trick modification that it's behaving itself now. Now I did try carrying that stove bottle with the pump in I thought that would be a lot more convenient but when I got to the pack this morning um, it pressurised a little bit and leaked so definitely while you're transporting that bottle around put the stopper on I was hoping I could just use the pump came, oh excuse me came with a little gadget it's got some tools built in and a little pricker for the jet now whether I will choose to use this stove with this setup I don't know perhaps if I wanted to get this pack lighter I'd have to lose the cocoon if the top and bottom blanket work tonight that is then I could replace the BRS booster plus one with my homemade 
um, little cat stove there's not anywhere else I can shave any weight from really because I it is pretty compact and lightweight so I don't think I will be uh, having the basher up or that's actually a tarp 10th wonder Sagasso I don't think they're available for purchase anymore either I think it's going to impede my camping enjoyment having that up easy in it so I'm a little better prepared for all eventualities so what I want to do is create a dedicated pack just for the snug pack so it will be the carry more caribou it will be elements of snug pack depending on weather it will be the booster plus one brs stove i like the setup and i'll gonna twin it all together with that sagasso 10th wonder I'm, i don't think i'm gonna change anything in that pack it stays as it is so this is my trial just to see if this little top blanket is going to take me through the meridian hour it's the hour before sun up with the day is at its coldest and that's the only time i ever wake up all night uh, last time i was out in just a softy suit i didn't have any top layer at all uh, I woke up about half four, it's 15 degrees. Had I have twinned that up, say, um, with a sleeping bag liner or the jungle bag, I'd have been, uh, I'd have slept a lot longer. Uh, definitely, definitely. Now, the under blankets have always let me down in the past because I believe the uh, manufacturing hype. Um, I, I got the hammock gear incubator 20 degree it's a summer bag and it wasn't even any good even in British summer so the cocoon is only there um, as needs be if it's required at all I hope it's not I, I'm still gonna go with a down uh, pea pod I'm gonna see what that's like just for the summer just to conserve space more than anything I could have put um, a much better hiking pair of trousers on uh, to keep my legs warm but I wanted to push this system a bit so I can see whether just this thin top blanket is going to keep me warm until whatever time I wake up. If you want a more accurate review for kit rather than people's opinion say on YouTube is I go to the product that it is I'm thinking of investing in and I go to Amazon and at the bottom of the product there is a review and there was a lot of positivity about the snug pack under blanket um, and that should be without the hype you know it's not manufacturers hype it's not somebody on YouTube who's bought it he'll, he'll tell you anything uh, the, these are people who stand to gain nothing from writing their review really oh, so I thought I'd share that with you it's a, it's a good reliable source of information if I can lie in here like this until six half six I'll know this has done its job I was just out then just checking round there's a little fox just behind you oh, he's gone so he's using the track that follows the edge of the boundary here that's where I am on the edge of this boundary and there's us in the middle there the foxes make one hell of a cry at night as well um, I'm gonna put an illuminator up I think just to let the wildlife know I'm here and it will just deter them
and we've got this little it's called the wand an LED wand it doesn't use a lot of power I can leave it on it's red it's a flashing red it's a blue it's a flashing blue it's a green it's a flashing green it's I don't know white green again but I'm gonna leave this on probably in green and hang it somewhere here and Mr Fox and the deer probably won't like that and stay away now beaners are the first thing on the hammock I swap out it used to be hanging like this and it started to make little itty bitty cut marks where I was hanging it and taking it out with that sharp edge now these are my more expensive screw gate beaners here and that is so I can screw the gate and lock it off but as you can see he even unlocked the suspension is uh, holding up very well now you notice I haven't snugged this suspension right to a tree like I used to I used to snap uh, the beaner over the running end here so the beaner would sit up against the tree probably round the side like that now with this kind of uh, suspension I can just hook off to one of these lower parts and make a gap in like that it's better for the tree it's certainly better for me because I can hang things a lot easier having access to this gate so I do have my knife on me which I've been sharpening I don't pretend to be an expert on sharpening knives it's always been a mystery to me really I've tried and I've tried and I've failed but you can see on there let me just wipe that off there's a lens there you are that's hair that's shave sharp I was out either last week or the week before I can't remember which it was um, and I woke up and a very very sore swollen jaw here um, and it didn't really bother me but it felt like I had something sharp here and I had eight perfect row of look like bites uh, but in a perfect circle there and I've had it a couple of weeks it's going down now the swelling's going down it's left one hell of a scar here so that's what that is um, in case we're wondering I, I, I just woke up with it from camp I don't know what had bitten me um, whatever it was I slept through it anyway it's about eight o'clock at night and there is still plenty of light and there will be for some time yet so I've got to keep my eye on the time <laughs> that's the only time I know when to go to bed otherwise it's going to be half 10, 11 it's going to be as light as this and uh, I'll be going to bed late and waking up late I, I'm usually in the hammock by half nine something like that maybe ten half ten is a quite a late night for me in a hammock uh, I'm usually up around half five six if that is nice and warm I might have a lie in till half six I don't know what those are but I do have a reference book for when I get home so next time be able to reference these perhaps just growing on a stump now the logs here that I'm slowly gathering you notice I've just put them in this kind of arrangement where 
it's on a 45 degree because I'm not going to chop these logs up or saw them what I'll do once this fire is more established I can pull these in to the fire and just burn it section at a time grab another one pull it forward um, I think it's called the Avenk or Avenki fire it's a very crude version of it but I've been doing this for years just because one I'm lazy and don't want to saw wood but this Avenki method I was very surprised to learn um, is a tribal method okay it's coming up to half nine and I'm gonna get a brew on I really regret not bringing a book out now because there's loads of light but I've taken um, the cocoon off well I've taken it off one side slid it down the bottom and I just want to see uh, this on its own now I've been in it and I don't buy it that this is going to keep me warm for the night uh, maybe I haven't hung it correctly or, or something so what I've done I've loosened off the foot and head end um, so it hangs just a little lower because it was pressing right up against me when it was too tight there's about an inch gap now I'm assuming that that is about correct when I tightened it all up I wasn't getting the kind of warmth that I thought I should have and I was really tempted just to put the cocoon back over all this because the under blanket, top blanket and cocoon is phenomenal. I'm just not too successful with under blankets. I've had the duck down one I had or goose down for 20 degrees. Um, I thought it was a load of baloney. A lot of money as well. Hell of a lot of money. Okay, costs very little just to insulate it like this. That's about two quid's worth off eBay. There's still a lot of light about, but probably not enough to film by. So I'm going to make this the last brew. Yeah, I do like being toasty, not just surviving the uh, the cold periods. I, I like being toasty warm. If at all in the night I feel any chill at all, I'm going to put the cocoon back on. I won't hesitate with that. I don't like feeling. Um, cold at all. I do like the idea of using the cocoon with the under blanket and top blanket. Just about to put my plastic cup on that for a second. Now the review of this little booster stove we can watch on its maiden day out and it was a lot of fun to film uh, so that's coming next on the channel that's already been filmed that was a, a good day i enjoyed it and i think you'll like the uh, secret little garden we found only takes a uh, less than two minutes to bring that to a full boil with this little booster stove Maybe I do just sleep cold. I'm sure if I threw a pad in there and I've got a lightweight three quarter length, it would be fine. Maybe I do just sleep cold.
Good morning. And it is a good morning as well. And look at the light. I'll have to tell you what time it is in a second. I've just got the fire going. Um, I'm just going to have a little warm up. It's not freezing. But uh, I do appreciate it. And the cocoon went back on. Not because it was bitterly cold. It was just annoying me a little bit with a cold spot I had on my back and I'll tell you about it in a minute. Just want to brush my teeth and dig a hole. Well it's actually ten past six in the morning. All the light is flooded this this little bit of woodland. It's uh, really bright. That was a good lie-in for me that for a hammock setup. Um, I'm glad of this though. I'm gonna put a smock on in a minute, get something warm to drink. So I started off just with the under blanket or under quilt and top blanket, and uh, do you know I could have, I could have got down uh, to whatever temperature it went to last night quite easily, I think. But for some reason, I had this niddly cold spot on, on my back, about that big, about there. And that was it. But the hell could I get rid of that little cold spot like that? Now, when I put the uh, little reflector pad in, that helped. But uh, I thought, I want just one night, just one, where I can actually really enjoy my sleep. So out came the cocoon. And let's face it, I'd bought it with me anyway. It was going to be wasted carrying it out like this if I'm not going to use it. So yeah, I'm going to utilise what I've bought. And I'm glad I, I did bring it. Now I'm not actually saying you need the cocoon with the under blanket, it's just me. Um, I, I suffer lower disc problems and I, I think that's a lot to do with the cold sensations in my back. That's probably it. But I have a new idea. Uh, of setting up a system to hang in the trees with uh, and it's a more natural setup I'm going with nature rather than trying to buck against it with uh, synthetics that little vixen fox didn't bother us so I turned that LED wand off in the end <sighs> now here comes the challenge of trying to find things. I put things where I think I know where they are. And uh, they disappear. I'm going to put my smock on. I've got a smock in here somewhere. I used it as a pillow. So I didn't put it on. I just had a t-shirt and lightweight pants. Now I was absolutely blown away with uh, the top quilt, the top blanket they're calling it and it's only thin, it's like a jungle sleeping bag, British Army jungle sleeping bag, it, it's thin but wow, yeah so warm I was not cold from the top section at all my legs and my feet were as warm as when I went to bed as when I woke up I just wish my spine could have been but that's probably just me because of my condition coming to the end of the line here suspension 
there's that little LED wand. I've just put my knife on there as well so I can find it. And my water which is just clipped on by a beaner and this is really handy having it here. I do like this uh, long range recon patrol quart and I can just pour water like this and attached to the suspension of the hammock is my pack. There you go, 13 degrees Celsius. I had a weird dream that I was uh, living in a jungle with the cast of a V-Design pet. And if you don't know what a V-Design pet is, ask your parents. Oh, that's ready. Oh, I didn't use a bash here last night. It goes in the top of the pack. Oh, that's the shelter packed up. I'm just going to put the stove in that side, the uh, food stuffs in that side. Now I tried it, pitching it quite snug up against me at first. That's when I started noticing that little patch of cold on my back. That's when I tightened, uh, that's when I loosened it, loosened it right off. Um, it made it slightly better. However, I am going to look into secondary insulation for myself. There seems to be a community online that I've been reading on the forums. Are you um, an under blanket camper or a sleep mat camper and uh, as you can imagine a lot of debate online about that now I don't think they're uh, mutually exclusive to each other I, I think they can be intermingled very very easily um, and if you watched the summer camp out the summer night rain camp out or something like that it was called um, I put a pad in along with my under blanket um, now the only chill that time came from my chest, my top layer. So, and that got down to 15 degrees. Now I do mix and match my kit for my own benefit, not for anyone else's. If I want to put a pad into my kit as well as an under blanket, I will. And it works for me and I'm keeping that idea. So I'm going to swap out the hammock and I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to put the cheap little eBay 13 quid jobby in it. And I've never had this problem ever in any uh, situation of hammocking, is I was sliding down to the bottom of the hammock. I'd, I'd start off at the top and my feet would slide down to the bottom and me along with it until I'm crouched up like a little baby down the bottom and uh, so many times I, I just push myself back up to the head end now I do sleep with my hammock high side head low side feet and then I get um, slightly better sleep but never 
have I slid down to the bottom the difference is only an inch or two from head to foot um, so that's another reason the hammock's coming out of that and that's the snug pack it's not the tropical it's the other one 